All right, hey there folks. So as you can see, it is time for a Foster Impact Devices Bull Blackjack review. So I finally got this guy from Scott, my man Scott. This is a blackjack. This is my blackjack. So what is a blackjack, you may ask, those of you in YouTube land who have stumbled upon this. Well, a blackjack is a unique item. It's in the impact weapon or impact tool um, category of items. What it is, and if you were to take this uh, underneath this leather and look, you will see an eight inch long, roughly half an inch in diameter, coil spring going from here at the butt all the way to the tip. The last two to about two and a half inches here is cast in lead that's vaguely uh, bullet or torpedo shaped. So as you can see, just look at this leather here incredible detail work and incredibly tight and masterful weaving by Scott um, yeah the the work he does on this is uh, second to none I mean wow yeah uh, the amount of attention to detail that he puts into these and the amount of time that he must spend in getting these just so imperfect is a uh, kind of mind-blowing to me really and it's also kind of mind-blowing to me um, you know just how people balk at uh, the prices asked for these things and then also when people put out or put forth that you know a hunk of uh, Chinese made you know flea market garbage is gonna be just as good well I mean maybe for one time it might do sim something similar but um, this is going to last you know practically forever if I do my part in taking care of it so again you're kind of probably wondering well, what do these things do well this is a pocket club I mean, for all intents and purposes, and to not put too fine a point on it. Um, this is kind of, uh, for those of you who don't know, this is uh, called the Bull, B-U-L-L. -L. And um, that was a model uh, name of, the, of a blackjack made by the Buckheimer Company, which um, these days doesn't make lead and leather impact tools anymore. Um, yeah, so the name Bull, I can think of two possibilities. One, in that it's kind of a shorter, stubbier, thicker, you know, kind of a sawed-off version of a larger jack. Um, you know, kind of how we use the, the term bullfrog, bulldog, or bull shark. Um, the other possibility, I think, is that uh, I think these were popular amongst um, railroad bulls or railroad cops that patrolled the train yards, um, even up to this present day. Now... What are railroad bulls? What are real, well? They're essentially cops. They're essentially policemen who are assigned to take care of the the rail yards and the railway systems of our country. And they're often big, scary guys that um, are armed to the teeth. And historically, they um, they were not too kind or gentle to anyone they caught on uh, railway property. And oftentimes, they were by themselves with no backup, dealing with the the dregs of humanity, the rapists, the murderers, the transients, the people who didn't want to be seen in the light of day. So um, this one here, done by Scott, this is done in a true red. It's not an ox blood. It's not anything. It's it's red. It's kind of a distressed, um, pure red color, offset nicely with just this beautiful black that um, is kind of traditional for blackjacks. Now, um, as you can see here, this leather is nice and thick, very sturdy. Uh, this strap here is kind of a defining feature or a hallmark of the of the bull blackjack. Now, as you can see, it goes from, you know, this portion of the butt curving around the outside portion of the handle here, and then it kind of terminates in uh, kind of this lashing here at the end of the striking head. Um, the coil spring here gives it a nice degree of flexibility in hand. I don't want to do that too much, but you get you guys get the idea. Um, what this does is that in use, you know, and again, I cannot stress enough how dangerous these things are. These are not something you'd want to spar with a friend with. Um, I even, you know, wouldn't want to be taking this to a heavy bag much just because <laughs> they're they're that nasty. They're that, um, you know, these these are. These are and can be and have been uh, very lethal uh, tools and devices. They're, they are highly illegal, illegal and uh, outlawed for a good reason. Um, I don't think they should still be outlawed or illegal. I think, you know, with, with judicious use and um, personal responsibility, these things 
uh, are incredible um, tools to be added to toolkits for personal survival, personal defense, and um, you know, just really being able to take care of yourself. Um, but again, uh, that's about 10 ounces of lead in the end there, and it's about eight inches overall. Again, get my ruler up there, measuring the butt end all the way to the head. That's almost eight inches exactly. Um, a little over 20 centimeters for my metric friends. So yeah, this uh, the spring um, is done very well. Uh, Scott said when he does the spring, he likes to be able to kind of grasp it at the end here. And if uh, with the weight, if it holds true and does not bend, he says that um, that's a good spring that he can use for a blackjack. Now Scott, he um, kind of tries to follow on a lot of pro on a lot of his uh, products. He follows kind of the Buckheimer catalog. So Buckheimer made you know easily over a dozen different uh, models and varieties of their blackjacks. Now um, anywhere from just small, short little keychain varieties all the way up to you know big monster convoys and uh, custom pieces and stuff. So uh, Scott, he's all over the all over the board and all over the page with uh, sizes and varieties. I chose this one because it is easy to fit discreetly into a, a larger front pocket or a, a really deep back, back pocket. So you what you what you get is you get a tool that has a tremendous amount of torque with that spring and the the knuckle strap there. Um, I mean this is this is one of the last things I would ever want to get uh, hit or smacked with. This would be like getting hit with a, a hammer. You know, a carpenter's hammer. I mean, this this would uh, plow through bone and tissue like a like a Mack truck. Um, uh, these, as opposed to saps, were often frowned upon even in the law enforcement community because it was so easy for for an officer to uh, go a little too heavy on someone that they were um, you know in a confrontation with. Um, hence, the switch to saps. You know, probably over uh, half a century ago. But these are still tremendously effective. Um, the kind of the general rule of thumb is if you're uh, not trying to kill them, you go for anywhere except the the head, neck, you know, spine, those areas, um, because it would not take much power or adrenaline to uh, to kill someone or turn someone into a vegetable. And um, the vast majority of police officers didn't want to do that, even to the the worst possible offenders. So. Um, these things easily break bones like number two pencils um, versus the saps, which were a tiny bit more humane and safer to use. Um, these things are brutal, they're effective, and to my eye and the eyes of many others, it's just a beautiful example of uh, a craftsmanship and artistry. I mean, the, the, the time that he's, sent, that he's spent getting these together and um, practicing with these over the decades and just... Um, learning from so many uh, other sources as well as just trial and error. Scott Foster is really a modern day master. I mean, he and his brother both, they, they say, you know, we're weapon makers, we're not leather workers. The stuff that we make just happens to mostly be in leather. Um, it's true here of this as well. So again, I hope I've uh, demonstrated, um, you know, kind of the, the craftsmanship here, uh, the heirloom quality of this piece. This is going to be mine forever. Um, my kids and grandkids are going to fight over this after I'm gone. Um, if you would like one of these for your very own, uh, please just remember a couple things. One, these are not cheap. These are not the the fourteen dollar you know Chinese made pieces that you see in shooting catalogs or martial arts magazines. These are the real deal. These are made um, by hand, you know, to order by the man himself. Um, you know, he doesn't he doesn't have a shop. I mean, he doesn't have a store. He doesn't have employees putting these together for him. He does it himself. Um, Scott uh, is one of the Foster brothers. Uh, he is a, a full-time law enforcement officer. He works with police canines. He's a very uh, active member in his um, law enforcement community. He's also a family man, um, like his brother Todd. And he does these things on the side, taking um, time away from his family and from his uh you know other duties and he makes these on the side so these are not cheap they uh, they're not done you know they're not mass produced so be patient if you get a hold of him you can get a hold of him usually via email on his website fosterimpactdevices.com um, also if you're on facebook he's a uh, rather easy to find there um, you can usually look through a couple of the pages that are dedicated to 
blackjacks and saps and brass knuckles and knuckle dusters and things like that. You'll see uh, both Scott and Todd Foster there. So again, anyway, I hope you guys have a great evening and a great rest of the day. Thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed. Take care.